Hey everyone, it's Corona from The Headphone Show. Today with me, I have the HD 560S, which was kindly provided to us for review by Sennheiser. Let's check it out. The HD 560S, which retails for $199.95, is the latest release in Sennheiser's lineup of audiophile over-ear headphones. Its purpose is to deliver an accurate sound that makes for a faithful listening experience. How does it perform? Well, we'll get to that briefly, but first, let's go over the basics, starting off with packaging and accessories. Now, admittedly, there isn't really much to look at here. The HD 560S comes boxed in the same simple packaging used for the HD 58X, HD 600, and HD 650. Included with the HD 560S, you'll find a 3 meter quarter inch terminating cable and a quarter inch to 3.5 millimeter adapter. One note on the included cable is that I personally found it a little too long for desktop use and it's also fairly kinky, so I found that it could somewhat get in the way if I wasn't using a velcro strap to wrap it up. Also, the headphone side of the cable has a locking end, so it may not be easy finding a replacement for it. Let's now talk about the HD 560's build and comfort. The HD 560's chassis is identical to that of the HD 599, though it's rocking an all matte black finish and a grille design that more closely resembles that of the HD 660S. As I'll talk about in a second, Sennheiser's choice of using this style of design as opposed to the HD 600 series chassis goes a long way for comfort, though as a result, structurally the HD 560S definitely doesn't feel quite as solid as say the HD 600 or even the less expensive HD 58X. Obviously, I don't think that any issues will arise under normal usage conditions, though I definitely recommend that you do not stress test these and that you try to prevent drops. One last thing I do want to mention though is that I did notice when putting on the headphone that the stretching of the headband already started to loosen up the glue holding the headband padding in place, so I fear that that piece may need replacing not too far down the line. Moving along to comfort, the HD 560S is outstanding. For the first day or two, they were definitely on the clampy side, but af after they eased up, they've been an absolute pleasure to wear. The headband padding has a greater surface area and cushioning than what is used on something like the HD 650, so I feel as though it actually does a better job at distributing the clamp and weight of the headphone. The velour used on the pads is incredibly soft, which makes them very easy on the skin and it keeps my ears cool in prolonged listening sessions. Additionally, thanks to the 500 style chassis, they're extremely lightweight at a mere 240 grams. The only thing I want to mention here is that the inside of the ear cups, despite being deeper than on the HC 600 series headphones, it does have a slightly raised piece near the back, so if your ears happen to stick out a bit more, then it may come in contact with that piece. Other than that though, these are easily some of the most comfortable headphones I've worn, and I've had no issues wearing them for day-long listening sessions. Now let's talk about what most of you are probably here for, and that is of course the sound. Given its 500 series look, I wouldn't blame you if you expected the HD 560S to sound like an HD 599, but its sonic signature and technical performance I find is more closely aligned with that of Sennheiser's HD 600 series headphones, which isn't all that surprising given that this headphone was designed with reference class sound in mind, and it also takes uh, inspiration from the HD 660S. Starting off with the bass, it's really good, and it actually sees some improvements when compared to the HC600 and the HC650. It has significantly better extension, and whilst it still has some roll off under 40Hz, it's considerably more gradual when compared to, for example, the HC600, which has a significantly steeper decline. So you're definitely getting a lot more of that sub bass depth and rumble, which helps in rounding out the bass response a bit more. Additionally, the bass on the HD 560S to me sounded uh, quite a bit tighter and that's because it doesn't have the pronounced mid bass bump like some of the other open back Sennheiser headphones. Some listeners might miss the warmth that that elevation could add to the headphone sound, but I prefer the bass presentation on the HD 560S, at least to me it felt more accurate. 
Moving on to the mid-range, it's very similar to that of other Sennheiser over-ear headphones that I've listened to, which is to say that the mids on the HC 560S are great. Uh, the mid-range here primarily reminds me of that of the HD 100 and the HD 600, so they differ slightly from that of the HD 650 in that they don't have that sort of lower mid-range bloom or enhanced tonal richness, and instead uh, it has a very even and linear mid-range that makes for accurate and uh, natural vocals and instruments. One particular feature that I really like about the HC 560's mids is that it's got a really well represented upper mid range between 2 to 5k, which has just the right amount of energy to give instruments like electric guitars their buzz and a realistic presence without becoming forward or shouty. Overall, the mids here just have a great tonality that feels remarkably organic. Then, as for the highs, they're for the most part pretty enjoyable, though there is a deviation in the lower treble that I think could be a little bit bothersome for some listeners. So, 5.5k to me sounded as though it was elevated by maybe 4 to 5 dB, which for me made the transition from the upper mid range to the lower treble a little bit harsh. Additionally, this introduced some pretty noticeable glare and just like on the HD 58X and the HD 660S, which had a pretty similar uh, peak or rise there, uh, I found that it can make the HD 560's timbre feel not quite as natural as that of the HD 600 or HD 650. Aside from that 5.5k rise though, I thought that the treble region on the HD 560S was great, and I really appreciated how nicely it extended into the upper treble. In this regard, it reminded me quite a bit of the HD 600, which also has very nice air qualities above 10k. Moving on from tonality to technical performance, let's first talk about the HC 560's detail retrieval capabilities. And this is where I think that it sees a considerable upgrade over the HC 500 series headphones, as well as from the HC 58X, which could sound a little bit grainier by comparison. It's still not quite as refined as the HC 600 or HC 650, especially not when powered by a crazy amplifier like the Fonitor X from which the HD 600 series headphones benefit significantly, but at least on entry level amplifiers, the difference in their capabilities I'd say is marginal, and the HC 560S is still a headphone I think is adept at texturing and nuancing vocal and instrument lines as it creates a clean image of the music, delivering good performance for its price point. Then for soundstage imaging and layering, this is where the HC 560S surprised me the most. One of the main criticisms of the HC 600 series is that it has poor spatial qualities with intimate soundstage and poor imaging. But these are two categories where the HC 560S performs really well. Of course, it's no HD 100, but it actually has a very good soundstage that makes for a good sense of distance, and it just makes for a more organic and open listening experience. Additionally, the HC 560's imaging is precise and helps in more easily determining the position and directionality from which sound cues originate, and it does both of these things whilst retaining the same great instrument separation and depth that the HC 600 series possesses. Lastly, we have dynamics, and this is unfortunately where the HC 560S performs like the other open back Sennheiser headphones I've listened to, so not so great. The bass region, while still having some kick to it, it's not the most impactful I've heard, and in this price range, headphones like the DT990 Pro have quite a bit more punch in the lows. The upper registers still offer a good tactility that better reproduces the pressure and weight behind instruments attack and snap, but if you're looking for a really punchy headphone, this might not be my number Number one recommendation. Before heading into a conclusion of this review, I just wanted to quickly mention EQ. Now, out of the box, the HD 560S has a very good tuning, though. I, as always, I still like to add some EQ just to bring it closer to my personal preference, and in the case of the HD 560S, I like to add a bass shelf under 85Hz just to give the sub bass region a bit more presence, and I also turned down 5.5k, as for me, uh, that was just a little bit harsh and I'm also particularly sensitive to that region of the frequency response. If you'd like to try out my EQ for the HC 560S, there will be a link in the description down below to a post I've made on the headphones community forums, which is a list of all my EQ presets. Okay, so now to wrap up this review on the HC 560S, I think that Sennheiser has developed a great headphone here. It delivers a faithful listening experience and it's worthy of being part of Sennheiser's lineup of reference headphones. Now, 
I think that for listeners looking for a warmer sound signature, listeners who want the more resolving headphone, or listeners who already have really, really uh, high-end uh, source gear, I think that the HC600 or the HC650 would be the stronger option. However, I personally feel as though the HC560S is probably the most well-rounded headphone in the $200 price range. It's very comfortable, it's got a great tonality, it doesn't have the soundstage or bass extension shortcomings of its predecessors, and it's very easy to drive. So whether you're looking for a new adventure in the audio space jungle, or maybe a great introduction to the world of enthusiast audio, the HD560S gets a very strong recommendation from me. Anyways, that's all from me today. I hope you enjoyed this video or found it useful. If you did, do consider dropping a like. If you want to learn more about this headphone or others, I highly encourage you to check out headphones.com, which has dozens of great articles already on it. For more headphone and audio video content, stay tuned by subscribing to The Headphone Show. And until next time, this is Chrono signing off.